Hey everyone, Kirk here from Lakeshore. Welcome to today's Learning at Home STEM Challenge. Today is all about sending cars flying through the air, and we're going to make a ramp to do just that. So how does a car fly through the air? Well, stunt drivers and daredevils drive their cars off a ramp and let momentum carry the car through the air as gravity pulls it back down. Hey! But what's gravity and momentum? Well, gravity is a force that pulls things down, and momentum is built up to keep things moving. Now, a great example of this is jumping. When you jump, you use two feet to push off the ground, and then gravity is what pulls your body back down. Now, if you were to stand on a line and then jump forward, you wouldn't go very far. You can go a little bit, but if you were to run first and then jump, you would go a lot further. And that's a great example of momentum. As you're running towards the line, your body is building up speed so that when you jump, you've built up a lot of momentum to help carry you through the air before gravity pulls you back down to the ground. Now, this is a lot like our car jump. Stunt drivers will build up momentum by using super powerful engines to drive really fast towards a jump. By the time they go off the jump, they've built up a lot of momentum to keep their cars flying through the air. Our cars are toys. They don't have super powerful engines and they don't have legs to jump with, so how are we going to get our cars up into the air? Well, today we're going to be building a ramp to explore how things like gravity and momentum will help make our cars jump up and fly through the air. But before we begin, adults, here's what the kids are going to need. A chair that is safe to tape onto, some sheets of paper, a rectangular food container, tape, small toy car, and a ruler that is wider than the car. If you don't have a ruler like this, help your kids cut a strip of cardboard to the right size. Adults, the concepts we're exploring in this challenge are gravity and momentum, but in order for the jump to work properly, the track needs to be straight and well supported. Some younger kids may need a little bit of help setting the track up at first, especially with folding and taping the tracks together. But once everything is set up, they'll be able to freely explore these concepts and get a lot of first-hand experience with gravity and momentum as they challenge themselves to get their cars to fly higher and further. Now that you have your materials together, let's get started. Alright kids, in order for us to make a ramp, we're going to first need to make a few tracks. To do that, take a piece of paper and fold it lengthwise into thirds like this. Then take your ruler and lay it across the middle of your paper like that, and then fold the sides over your ruler on both sides like that, okay? Next, take the sides you just folded and fold them back out towards the edge of the ruler, again on both sides. When you're done, remove your ruler, and you should have made a track that looks like this. Make about five, six of these tracks, and then we're gonna tape them together to make our ramp. Now that we folded our six tracks, we gotta tape them together to make one long track. To do that, take one track and lay it over another piece so there's a little bit of an overlap, then take a piece of tape and tape it down on top, flip it over, and then add another piece of tape here on the bottom, and then, Make sure you put a piece of tape on each side right here so you keep those little flaps together. Like that, and fold it over. And then on this side, and fold that over. Okay, that'll give you one nice solid piece. Keep going until you've taped all six tracks together. Once you've taped everything together, you should have one nice, long, straight track. Now that we've built our track, it's time to set it up like a ramp. To do that, take your track and lay it against the chair so that the top part is on the backrest, the bottom part is on the ground, 
and the front edge of the seat is touching somewhere along the middle of the track. Once you've found that angle, go ahead and tape it in place. All right, let's take a look at our ramp. The top part is supported by the front edge of this chair, but there's this whole section at the bottom that doesn't have any structure. I'm worried that if a car is too heavy, it's gonna cause this area of the ramp to fall. So to help with that, we wanna add a support pillar. All right, to build a support pillar, take a piece of paper and fold it in half once, and then again. Now, take your paper and open it up and fold this piece the other direction so you can make a triangle out of your paper. Take a piece of tape, put it at the top, and do the same thing for the bottom. That's your support pillar. All right, to make our jump, we want to take another piece of paper and fold it into thirds like we were doing with our tracks. Go once, and then fold it again. Now with our tracks, we wanted them to be nice and straight, but with our jump, we want to have a little bit of a curve. So take your paper over the edge of the table, and do this. What you're doing is giving it a nice little curved shape like that. Okay, take your to-go container and lay your curved piece of paper inside the container like this. Take a piece of tape and at the front edge of the paper, tape it to the container like this. Okay. Next, you'll notice that the paper curves down to the bottom of the container and then back up. We want to put a piece of tape right where the paper touches the bottom of the container. So put one piece of tape on one side and then another piece of tape on the other side. Just like this. You have tape here, here, and here. Now to install it onto your track, lift your bottom of your track up a bit, position it so it's just resting over the edge of the container, and then tape it down. Put a couple pieces of tape to make sure that it's nice and secured. All right, there we go, that's our jump. All right, now that we have our jump installed, let's see how it does. Wow, that worked pretty well. Let's go set it up inside and see how far it can go. All right, that jump just made the car fly 27 inches before hitting the ground. That's pretty good. Now, if you're having trouble getting your car to fly off the end of the jump, there's a couple things that could be going wrong. Check the walls. The walls need to be standing up so that they can guide the car down the chute. If your walls are laying flat, then your car could slide off to the side and fall off the ramp. If the track itself is giving or falling under the weight of the car, then you need to add some more support pillars in those weak areas. Remember, the track needs to be evenly supported all the way through. Now let's say your car makes it all the way down the ramp, but then comes to a hard stop at the bottom. Check the shape of your jump. The jump needs to be nice and curved so your car can smoothly roll down and back up the jump. If it's at an angle, your car is going to roll down and then hit that angle and then stop. It's not going to fly off the end of the jump. Once you're able to build a successful ramp and jump, try figuring out ways you can get your car to go further. How do you think you can change that? Maybe by changing the angle or the length of your track? Try it out and see. How far were you able to make your car go? This is Kirk with Lakeshore. Until next time, keep on learning. Keep watching our Learning at Home videos. Plus, visit lakeshorelearning.com for thousands of free resources.